Hey everybody and welcome back to Death Studio. In this video I am going to completely just wing it. I feel like doing some Death Studio content. Alrighty so I'm going to start off, I'm going to do probably an indoor scene I'm thinking. Got my content library on the other screen because I do not want to be accused of promoting other people's stuff. I've got assets that I like and they're the ones that I'm going to work with and use. So I'm just going to, you know, some things are going to pop up in the scene tab here. You can see the names of some of the stuff I'm using. But, um, you know, I don't really care about that. Point being, I'm not going to, uh, you know, one of the main reasons I've already talked about with you guys that I don't do like product reviews and stuff is that the overwhelming majority of the time that product reviews, and I use that term very loosely, are done by uh, Dash Studio channels is because they're getting something in return usually they're getting paid or they're getting products for free from those vendors currently this channel is the number one resource on youtube for dash studio content so i'm talking but i'm actually browsing my content library while i'm talking which is why i'm jibber jabbering a little bit i'm just looking for an environment that i can use for what i want to oh that'll work that'll work loading in this got a nice one I think I've already used this a few times you guys have probably already seen this somewhere so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete some bits and pieces that I don't want to use don't need the stairs um, go through the apartment and just pick out the bits that I know I'm not gonna use because I'm going to take a picture of a character sitting on this sofa I don't really need a lot of this crap over here so all it's gonna do is take up geometry memory texture memory so there's no point having it in there. So just going through my scene, selecting the bits that I don't want to use, that I'm not interested in, and just literally unceremoniously deleting them. Is that, yeah, that's fine. We can get rid of that. All this crap out of the bathroom. Don't need to delete the back wall. But all of this extra stuff, we just don't need it. Don't need it in your scene. What I generally do when I'm creating a scene in Daz is I will actually create the full scene and then I have not just accidentally moved something miles in uh, and then I will basically decide what I want to keep for each shot and I will just reload the scene for each new shot so that I can delete stuff from the scene that I don't actually want to use. Now I kind of maybe want to shoot from down here, get rid of that, don't need the dish, the dish rack there. And I'm going to shoot with light coming out through this window and in through that one. And then the room is going to be kind of lit, but not horrendously lit. So I'm actually going to select the surfaces of the lights up there on the ceiling. Go into my surfaces tab and wait and see. I've got LED living. Get that. And I'm just going to turn the emission off. Don't need it. Completely unnecessary. And then it's also got LED case, LED somewhere else, but that's turned off anyway, so that's fine. And then I'm also going to turn off, select this LED lamp in there, and then under where the hell is where the hell is emission? I'm having a brain fart. Let's just ambient color, diffuse color, plastic, blah blah blah, specular color. It might not actually be a emissive surface. No, it doesn't appear to be. Okay, so that's fine. So there's no light coming out of there, so it's fine. It's just a yellow colored bulb in there, so yeah, that's fine. All right, uh, I'm also gonna delete this picture because it could be a copyrighted image. It could be something random that someone's found on the internet. It could just be a harmless picture. No, in normally, in normally I would replace that with something of my own. Um, one of the photographs I've taken as a photographer or something, but for the purposes of this exercise, I just get rid of it, it's fine. Cool. So before I brought the cam the uh, the character into the scene, I've got the scene to a place where only the stuff in the scene is that I'm going to keep is there. Now I'm going to use an HDRI, so I may have to block this door up. I maybe I shouldn't have deleted that, but it looks like this. Oh, that's the wall. Control Z. Yeah, that's a wall. I've got selected there so I might have to put a plane filling up this hole we'll see how it looks when I get because I'm gonna have the main light source coming from the back of the room probably don't need to that floor yeah that's not a floor all right so we can close down 
like this. I'm also going to delete all the cameras because they're no use to me whatsoever. Because more often than not, the animals are short. Cool. Right. I'm going to set my camera somewhere if I'm happy. And then I'm going to change my view mode into NVIDIA iRate. And I'm just going to see what's going on, what's what. So that, look, I like the look of the scene. I'm going to turn on, switch to my render settings, go to environment, and I'm going to choose another HDRI, so it might go a bit doolally for a second, just move that out of the way, and then go into my HDRI's folder, which is there, and I'm just going to choose one of my usual outdoor garden HDRI's just to get one loaded in, that will do. And I'm going to turn on draw dome. And hopefully my computer will not freeze up completely. And yet I am. I, I, I want to be clear. You, if you if you find that Dash Studio is locking up and taking a lot longer to do things, you're not the only one. And I've got a pretty powerful rig these days, and I still find myself struggling with this. Right, there is light coming from somewhere, and I am not happy about it. Let's have a look. Where is it coming from? That. Right. Turn that off. Surfaces tab, LED case wall emission, that is going off. Right now, the only light in the scene now should be coming through that door. Oh no, there's still some LED lights up there. Surfaces tab, surface there, LED case hall emission off. That got the right surface, LED hall emission. Ah, there we go. Turn it off, come on, give me the damn color selector. I was having a brain fart. Bear with for a moment, folks. There we go. Drop that down to off. And then just have another look around the room, make sure there's no light coming from anywhere. Cool, right, so at the moment, it looks very much like the HDRI is 180 degrees out. So I am going to do dome rotation. I'm gonna change it by 200 and just see what happens really. There we go, that's much better. All right, so now we're looking more like where I wanna be. I'm happy that the light's coming in. I'm maybe gonna brighten the outdoors up a little bit. I might just multiply that by three and see how that looks. That's better, a bit more light. Just gives me more justification for having light streaks. And it means that there's more light to bounce around the room. So we don't need to do a great deal in terms of fill light. So I'm going to use the three shapes smushed together icon. I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to make it probably about three meters. Divisions only needs to be one. And then on that plane, I'm going to move that up to, it looks like it needs to be about three and a half meters high. And let's just move that up in Y translate. 3.5, 3.5 meters or 3.5 centimeters. Uh, right, so if we switch it again out back into texture shaded mode, we can locate our plane wherever the hell it is. Got it selected. I am in the. Oh God's name is it? Let's try it. Switch out of that. Switch back onto the plane. Oh God. Now everything's having a hissy fit again. Okay. why we're on there there we go sorry having a massive brain fart there yeah so it actually needs to be 350 and then we can go in and we can see that it's still quite in the middle of the room just gonna bring that up so that it's out of view of the camera I'm gonna scale it up so that it fills up most of the ceiling I'm just doing fill light so right there that's that one drag it to the back of the room so that it's not creating too much shadow. Right now, if I come back down to here, one more around there, that'll do. Now we're gonna stick it back into NVIDIA IRA mode in the surfaces tab. Gonna come into emission, turn that on. Give it five minutes to have a think about it. Crank it up see what happens right it should be fairly minimal effects if I go into KCDMR2 we should suddenly see yeah 
suddenly now we see a huge amount of difference but if i bring that back down to about 50 it's just lifting the shadows up and now we've got our fill light so now we can set our camera and we're not going to set it in a permanent permanent this is where it's definitely going to be but this is a good opportunity for us to move to what i would consider to be a decent angle to take a shot i'm going to go a little bit lower i want to be down so that we're looking up at whoever we've got sitting on this couch maybe pan across a little bit and i'm just going to dump a camera where i am give it a moment for the dialog box to appear again in your own time dash studio there we go apply active viewport transforms accept and then we're going to dump back into texture shaded mode just to give our gpu fighting chance i'm just going to cut while i load in a character and put some clothes on them and stuff because nobody wants to see that and also it might cause a bit of juddering so Alrighty, so we have got a character loaded into the scene. It's one of my characters that I'm using for one of my newer games. And she's got some clothes on, barely. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give her a pose. I'm gonna get her to sit in here, probably put her feet up on the table or something like that. Just nice and casual. And then we can actually fine tune our character's uh, our camera pose. So all we're gonna do is just gonna go through the poses i'm going to go by sorting them by function and the function is going to be reclining let's see what reclining options we have and yeah let's see if we've got some good ones here again not showing any names or anything on the screen let's just see if i've got any of these mirrored because some of them are good you tend to find that um, you find a pose that you really like and then you can't find the mirror of it which is a real pain in the ass so let's just see what we've got. I want it to be relaxed. That's why I'm looking for reclining. If I can't find the pose reclining, then obviously I will look in the sitting option as well, which I might have to do by the looks of it. So we'll just go, we'll check out the sitting options as well. I'm talking whilst I'm looking. Sitting, make sure that, there's a, here's the thing that confuses a lot of people, or rather it catches a lot of people out. You have to have the asset that you're trying to post selected whilst you're browsing your smart content. Cannot emphasize this enough. <laughs> there are a number of people who send me really quite um, aggressive messages, both in the comments and on the YouTube videos and to my email address, shouting at me like I'm one of the DAS developers about how they can't get their smart content to appear. It's no, no. If you can't see your environments, deselect your character. If you can't see your poses, make sure you've got your character selected. And just to be clear, I do not work for DAS Studios. They had the opportunity to hire me to be their voiceover guy, and they decided to go with another British guy who no one's ever heard of. So, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, let's just see. So many poses, so little time. Oh my goodness me. All right, I think I found it. That one's not going to look too bad. We'll give her that one and we will see how it comes out. Hopefully we won't get any nip, poke through or anything like that. It doesn't look too bad. Rotate. No, let's translate. We need to translate anyway. But if I rotate her into an angle that I can live with. And bring her up like that. And we've got, luckily, this sofa has got a fairly flat surface on it. So I'm not having to manipulate the pose too much to make it look like her bum is touching although in this case it does look like maybe her bum is oh no it is actually touching the seat fair play don't criticize before you've checked so we've got to make sure that her bum and has this is kind of an issue in that it her bum looks like it's made of stone because it's not sinking into the couch so it, there's no harm in dropping her a little bit to be honest from the camera angle that i'm going to be working from you might not actually see her hand anyway so i'm going to go for that angle and then let's go back to my camera and just see what we can see right so as you can see can't actually see the hand can't actually see the um, whether the bum is touching the seat or not we're roughly in the pose that we want to be in so i'm going to select my camera I'm going to go to my camera presets and I'm going to change the focal length and then I'm going to use my rotate view tool to just get 
roughly a bit closer to where I want to be. I'm kind of sticking, I don't want to go that way too much to be honest, because I think too much light coming in through that window maybe will look a bit weird, but let's just, let's just manipulate this. That doesn't actually look oh too bad. Can always just use this tool to maneuver myself around a little bit more. Now at the moment she's looking off to the side. I quite like the idea of her being in that pose and still looking dead towards the camera. So I'm going to come out of that. Going to just select the eyeball and in left eye I'm going to go point at camera one. See how that looks. Might look a little bit weird but we can always undo if it does look stupid. Looking at camera two. Yeah, that looks all right. It looks okay. It looks not too bad. Right, so we've got a back, a, a main. We've got a foreground, which is the model. We've got background. Uh, I kind of want to do something maybe middle ground, in between the camera and the model, so that we've got a bit more depth. Because at the moment, this is going to look a little bit flat. So if I come back out and go into perspective view. I'm thinking of maybe hanging like a curtain or a drape between the camera and the model so that it looks like there's something going on in between. So I'm going to just go to my content library and I'm going to search for curtain and just see what comes up. And then if anything grabs me fancy, we can utilize that. It's got to be, you know, got a lot of wild, wild, boil, boil, blah, whatever that word is for neck curtains that posh people use, whereas most people just call them neck curtains. Um, I like the look of that one. It's not a deforce thing, which is a bit annoying. Let's just collapse that down. Because um, I kind of like it to be billowing in the wind a little bit, but we can kind of... doesn't really have to do that. To be honest, uh, let's just get, I'm going to go into Smart Content. I'm going to select nothing, and I'm just going to go to Props. And I'm just going to see what I've got in my props and see if I've got anything better that I can actually use as like a neck curtain flapping in the wind or something. I just want to add some motion to the scene because the model's got short hair. Um, everything's very static. Everything's very still. Uh, I want to add some kind of illusion of movement into the shot um, so that it looks like you know just just adds a bit of life to the image adds a bit of contrast so i'm, I'm adding it in the foregrounds so it's going to be blurred but it still adds that depth but at the same time as creating depth i also want to create that feeling of some kind of motion um just adds a bit more life to the shot all right so there's nothing in there let's go maybe in environments Maybe not. All right, well, I reckon what I'll do then is I'll take this curtain, I'll locate it in my scene. It's, it's not gonna look even vaguely like um, what it actually looks like in the finished product. So is that, oh, come here, you fecker. Cool, right. So curtain needs to be rotated. I reckon it needs to be scaled down quite a bit as well. And then lift it up quite a bit. Now if I go back to my camera and I move it along the x-axis. No, wrong axis, fair enough. Go back out to perspective view. We want to move it. Flip. Right, let's do that. <laughs> Zoom in. Okay, now we're in the place where we can actually move the flipping thing. So let's move it over there come back into our camera view right now we can see it so we can see if we're moving it in the right axis I actually want to come out this way and now I'm going to come back out of my camera view so I want to rotate it so I'm going to use my rotate tool I'm going to actually tilt it this way and then using the move tool again bring it down like this just because I want it to be at an angle oh gone too far gone too far right there's the bottom and I appear to have lost it all together. Oh no, that wasn't the bot. There we go, that's what I'm after. And then just bring that 
back across that way. And you could be forgiven for mistaking that now for a curtain flapping in the wind. Certainly once I've added the depth of field in the camera, which is what I'm literally about to do, it will have that illusion. So we're going to select our camera again, go into camera mode, switch on depth of field, and the focal distance needs to be considerably greater than it is. So we're focusing on her face, and from this distance, the depth of field, the or rather the field of vision is very, very small. So I'm digging that into our camera mode. Now we've got that. We've got a massive amount of light coming in through that side, a massive amount of light coming in through the other side as well. And then I'm going to, in post-production, I'm actually going to add the light streaks only because it's much cheaper to do it that way than to actually have a, a god ray cube in the scene. So I'm going to hit the render button and we'll see what happens. So here's our uh, render. Yeah, it's grainy as hell because I cut it off early because I really just, I, this is the post, this is going through the uh, process rather than giving you the finished article. Um, so as you can see, we've got our curtain covering up this side. It is quite transparent. You can't really see it, but it's, you know, it has added a bit of life to the picture. Um, I'm pretty happy with where we're at at the moment. If I did want to denoise it, I could just go for a uh, copy of that layer and then just go filter and we could go to noise and we could just give it a despeckle and then you can see it does an okay job for the sake of just not being quite so horrible to look at while we're working on it. So first thing I could do is just add a bit more of a blurring effect across the feet so that it looks like something's really uh, kind of messing with that. So what I'm going to do again is I'm actually going to copy this layer again and this time I'm going to go for a uh, filter. I'm going to do a blur and I'm going to do a motion blur and I'm going to go for something kind of like that and then I'm going to add a layer mask but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try different that kind of works for me and then we're going to drop the opacity down to about there and then we're just going to put a layer mask on there we're going to invert that layer mask and then I'm going to bring my brush tool in and I'm just going to paint over the feet making sure that I'm using white and not black otherwise I'm going to get nowhere and then that just creates this kind of pattern around here and then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hide that I'm going to copy this one again Control J drag this one on top of there and I'm going to do the same thing again and I'm going to do motion blur this time I'm going to spin it probably about probably kind of there no that's not very good it doesn't give as much of a, a, a line something in this vicinity I'm actually going to reduce the distance that works that's going to work this time I'm not going to change the screen mode I am going to drop the opacity down slightly and then I'm going to use my layer mask and I'm going to invert it again and then I'm just going to paint it over her feet again turn this one back on and then that's just giving us a kind of a weird like there's like there's something flopping in front of the feet there that's just creating that weird effect next thing i want to do is i'm going to copy the bottom layer again turn this one off turn this one off i'm going to copy this one and this time i'm going to go into channels and i'm actually just going to turn off all the other channels except for the red channel give us magenta and i'm going to use the move tool i'm going to nudge it across no it won't let me do it of course it won't let me do it why would it let me do it can i nudge because the tie it does not include because i've got the wrong flipping thing selected select red easy way <laughs> make life a lot easier <laughs> if I just do two copies of this turn that one off I'm gonna notice this one to the right one pixel I'm gonna go back into channels and I'm just gonna turn off green and then we're gonna come back out this one is just going to go as a mm. just trying to think of the best way of achieving this this one all we're going to do is we're going to bring that back on 
gonna nudge it to the left and on this one we're going to turn off the red and blue like that that's cool bring in our RGB in there I think we were better off with just the green like so yeah and then these two layers as you can see to combine they're just giving us black and white I'm just thinking about what I'm doing as I'm doing it, so you'll have to forgive me. There is a distinct difference between that. Okay, coming back into our towels. Okie dokie. Cannot use the move tool because the target does not include all of the composite channels. I know, I'm doing that on purpose. The weird thing is, right, here's the thing, right, here is the thing. If I actually get rid of all of these layers, okay, and I can do it with this one, if I go into this one, if I were to now select the red channel only, I can nudge that one across, and if I did it with the blue channel, I could nudge that one across, and if I did the green channel, I can nudge that one the other way, and then I'll go back to RGB, it gives me more or less the effect that I'm after, so that's what I'm going to do. And then this one can go on top of that, with its opacity turned down and what it does is it creates a fake lens aberration which just makes the image look a little bit more realistic and then we can obviously introduce it or remove it as much as we need to i just want to give it that whole lens effect which is basically it and then i'm going to create a new layer like this one and i'm going to hold down alt i'm going to select brush tool the brush tool and i'm going to just select that color there and all I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to create a very obvious, and this one is just more for a really, really faint luminosity kind of glow, like that. It's going to create a kind of a misty effect. And now in another layer, I'm going to make my tool much, 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 much smaller. I'm going to bring my flow up to 100% like this, and I'm just going to dot loads of lines and it doesn't matter how big or small or whatever because it's just a case of creating loads of little speckles and i'm going to go filter blur motion blur i'm going to turn it this way and i'm going to increase the amount and maybe a little bit less cool beans and then that one can either be normal, we can put it on soft light to create more of a soft effect, or we can go on hard light, which basically doesn't really do that much. You can go and screen if you want to again. It's really six and two threes. And then what I can do again is just create another layer. This one, I can just make it slightly fatter lines going across there, like so. And then again, this one's just gonna go way down on the opacity creates that kind of effect there. It gives us the effect of glow and I think this one maybe is a little bit too much. So we turn it down again a bit. It's meant to be quite, I don't want to say a subtle effect because God rays generally speaking are a very subtle effect. And then that gives us this kind of look. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to give it a fake lens glare kind of effect. Um, so the light's coming from here, so I actually want to go down there, so it's got to be R, a G, and a B, like that. And then this is going to go into like soft light, and the opacity is going to go way down until it's barely visible, like that. And then that's created that effect. And then I'm thinking, yeah, I kind of like this whole thing, but I'm actually going to turn those off for a minute. I'm going to come back down to this layer and I'm going to go with Control Shift Alt E. That's Merge or Visual Stamp Visible. And I'm going to Control J. Yeah, turn that one off. Going to go with this one Filter, Blur. Going to give it a bit of a Gaussian blur. Going to probably go down to about eight pixels and then reduce the opacity on this way down creates a bit of a blurring effect and then I'm going to give it a layer mask I'm going to go X to give me the black brush and I'm going to 
turn the opacity and leave the opacity at 100, turn the flow down, and then maybe come down a bit on that. And I'm just gonna reduce that across the eyes. The eyes are the things that draw you in in a picture. They're the things that the camera should be focused on. So we want as little blur over that area as possible. Then I can turn this layer back on and I'm gonna go with a filter, other high pass, 4.3 pixels, I reckon three. Yeah, three pixels is good. Then we're gonna go, um, this is gonna become a overlay or a soft light. Overlay or soft, soft light works. Drop the opacity right back down to kind of 26. You just wanna bring in some of those details that you might have blurred out a little bit more. Turn our lighting effect back on and then for a five minute post process, just to demonstrate what I would do in this particular instance, I think that looks pretty good. Thanks ever so much for watching this one, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I still the number one DAS resource on YouTube? I don't know, you decide. Let me know what you think and I will respond to your comments if I think it's worthwhile. Uh, other than that, take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you in the next one, all right? Bye-bye.